it's funny what happens um, when you're following the lectionary um, and your texts that were planned for that week line up with exactly what you needed um, for that week. Isaiah is speaking to a city that is in turmoil um, with those who have returned from exile and looking at its brokenness, a little bit of what we talked about uh, with Haggai last week. Um, and it's hard, and there's a lot going on that's really messy and has some serious justice issues um, that the people are trying to work through. Um, but our lectionary passages comes after all of the Isaiah's prophetic work and calls um, in terms of chapters 56 through 59. And this, this text is the end goal, that vision of hope that Isaiah is sharing with us to capture our hearts and our souls and to capture our commitment um, for what we're fighting for and for what we want to make happen. And it's a vision of why I am a Christian. I want everyone in our country and around the world to be able to live in the houses that they build. I want everyone in our country and around the world to be able to eat the fruit that comes from the gardens that they planted. I want everyone in our country and around the world to have enough and to know that their having enough doesn't mean that someone else won't. And a way to break that fear that is so deeply rooted in us, a fear and a terror that if someone else gets a job, it means that I won't be able to. And to find a way to fight for one another and for systems that help make it possible for there to be enough for all and for people to be able to reap and celebrate the fruits of their labor so that their work is not in vain. I love that line from the passage. So that our work is full of purpose and so that the sacrifices our veterans have made in their work and in their fighting is something that brings meaning and fullness and a depth that we did not have before. It's been a very intense week and a hard week. We can very easily relate with the earlier chapters from Isaiah as well um, and the calls forward for change. I want to share with you a little bit of my process this week and a little bit of my truth. Um, I am thinking of Reverend Dr. Bobby McLean, my preaching professor in seminary, who said, a sermon is nothing more and nothing less than one sinner standing in front of others, proclaiming the good news and the grace of Jesus Christ. So from me and my sinning self, I want to share what I have found and the grace and the good news of why I am a Christian and why I hold to this goal of this vision that Isaiah has painted. I grew up very strongly brought up in the faith, um, but there were a lot of cultural trappings that came with that. And one of them um, was uh, disparaging um, anyone um, who is LGBTQ. And in middle school, I wrote a paper. Um, we were to uh, write our stances um, in terms of whether we felt or not that LGBTQ persons should or could serve in our armed forces. I wrote that they should not be able to and defended it um, by describing um, coming back to barracks at night after having sacrificed and been in such a dangerous territory for so long and then not even having safe space to come back to because of being hit on. is a very limited view that I didn't know was limited. And I very much felt that I believed that I was correct and that I was protecting the people that I knew who were serving. Um, and that I was honoring what they were doing and defending their right and their space and what they needed in order to serve and to fight. It wasn't until many years later when I was in college 
and watching a video with my roommate and something came up and I made some other comment um, referencing homosexuality that was incredibly rude and mean and filled with hate, at which point she turned the video off and looked at me and said, we're done. This is not okay and this is not acceptable and I have friends and I will stand up for them right now even though they're not here. And that was the first time anyone defined to me what I was doing as painful or as hateful. And it was the first time anyone had challenged what I held to be right and true and faithful. And it was the first time I started thinking or looking or gathering information that was different um, than what I had been surrounded with and than what I had been taught growing up. I share this, and I share this truth um, because I am one of those who's scared um, for us as a nation right now. Um, I am scared with what we are giving one another permission to do with our hate, with our anger, and that I feel that stems from fear. This is not a pro or con candidate speech. This is a call for us as citizens of a kingdom um, for how we interact and talk and relate to one another. I've been really, really blessed this week by you all. Um, I will say that I did vote for Hillary Clinton and I was having trouble with it and stayed up till 3 a.m. and I don't do well without sleep anyways. Um, and so the next day when I came into the office, I was having trouble. I really wanted to break the glass ceiling. I'll be honest. I wanted to go girl moment. And as we were working on stewardship letters, um, I was trying my best to compartmentalize and keep going because if anything here, I will be committed to the best part of our democracy and supporting whoever has been voted in and honoring that. I will be doing that and please do not fear or do not mishear that. Um, I am committed to that as an American citizen. Um, but Beth was working with us and she um, just <laughs> finally started checking in on me <laughs> and asking me um, because I was a little too frustrated with some of the things that we were up against in wrong addresses and trying to get the information in stewardship than I re really should have been. There was clearly something else going on. Um, and so we were able to talk through. And when I got too jumping <laughs> about something that she was saying, she'd be like, now hold on, that's not what I'm saying, that's not what I mean. And then I'd pause and I'd re-listen again and we kept talking. And we've gotten to do that, I've gotten to do that in both of our Bible studies on Thursdays and in um, right before worship this morning as well. And I will say those are the conversations that give me hope. And that is the witness that I want all of us to be able to have, to be able to hear each other's truth and to be able to work together and to find a way forward. And that's what helps assuage my fear when I read the news reportings of what's happening. The Anti-Defamation League, the American Islam, um, Relation, Islamic Relations Association, and the Southern Poverty Law Center have reported in just over 200 hate crimes events um, with Trump being, um, camp Trump's campaign, not Trump, let me get that clear too, being specified. Um, and this is um, for in their tracking, um, a huge increase that is only analogous to what happened after Brexit. This does not normally, thankfully, happen. Um, but it does mean that here in Montgomery County, um, there were swastikas found in the boys' bathroom. It does mean that in Detroit, and I'm going to get these so that I make sure that I am reporting this accurately as it has been reported in, in Detroit, um, chanting um, about building a wall, and in Maple Grove, Middle Minnesota, um, bathrooms with white America and whites only. 
Um, we also have Canisius College in Buffalo, New York, reporting finding a black doll hanging from a rope in the elevator of a freshman dorm. At the University of Michigan, a woman wearing hijab was forced to remove her headscarf Friday night after a man approached her and threatened to set her on fire. At San Jose State University, a female student was attacked from behind by an assailant who grabbed her hijab, choking her and causing her to fall. Um, in a separate attack, an assailant attempted to kick a student um, and told him to go back to his own country, according to police. And if we, um, need any more, um, we have in our own Methodist backyard um, youth at a pilgrimage event, uh, much like our rock event in North Carolina, where about 5,000 were gathered um, doing the clothespin um, exercise where you write compliments or um, positive things and then clip them to each other. Um, and the Latino youth at that conference had clipped onto them, I love Trump and build the wall. Youth, if you are encountering this, or if you see this, or if this has been done to you, we need you to know that we love you and that you are of sacred worth, each and every single one of you, and that we will stand with you and we will protect you and we will defend you and we will support you and standing up against this and defending others and protecting others in your schools. Adults, we are called to do the same. I hope that as Christians, we share a vision where we do want everyone to have their houses and to inhabit them, to plant their vineyards and eat their fruit, to work in a way that is not in vain, to live out all of their days, to have joy and know the fullness of what it means to have life and have it abundantly. I hope that we want this and that we work for this with all of who we are, heart, soul, mind, and strength. It is my firm belief that Republican or Democratic, that that is something that we can all agree to and all work for. I will commit to supporting our president and I'm excited to see what will happen with the infrastructure plans that he has said that he is committed to. But safety, there will be safety for each and every one of us and we will combat hate and we will not let it stand because we have a good, good father. And that God is available to all and is for all. And we as Christians are called to the reconciling work that Christ has begun. Whether that be for the Israelites in Isaiah's time, being called into this vision and, and to work through the problems of what it meant for them coming back from exile. Of whether that is in the time of Paul and the early churches of figuring what it meant for Gentiles and Jews to be Christians and to be reconciled together in following Christ. Here's what I know. I know that one of my heroes and mentors in faith and in life is a veteran of the Vietnam War and served as our lay leader at Wesley United Methodist Church in my past appointment. And he refuses to celebrate Veterans Day because he thinks that it gives the rest of us a pass to ignore and support our veterans every other day of the year. And his fierce commitment in the Vietnam War never wavered when I walked through with him years of health complications because of his exposure to Agent Orange. And his fight for this country and for the veterans, homeless or not, continued when he in Northwest DC was late to a meeting, over an hour late because three open cabs passed him by. 
and would not pick him up. We have a call to work every day and every hour from our faith to fight for everyone's freedom and to sacrifice so that everyone can have the houses and enough to eat and to know their worth and their value and the place of their persons and their work in our nation. Next Sunday is our Commitment Sunday as we celebrate stewardship and celebrate the gifts that we give um, to physically making God's kingdom possible. And I would ask that with prayerful consideration, we view stewardship as our training ground to remind ourselves and to put into our financial and our body and our daily memory that there is a God and that there is a way for everyone to have enough. And that my getting what I need doesn't mean that someone else won't get what they need. That is the heart and the essence of our faith and the practice of our stewardship. And it is our training ground so that our work will not be in vain, but that all will have a taste of this banquet of knowing life and what it is like to have their job secured and have their person and their work valued. And we will find a way for every single person and every single person's work to have that space and have that celebration for every citizen in our country and for all of those who walk this journey with us. This is my commitment as a citizen of the kingdom of God and as a citizen of the United States. And it is a commitment that I hope to share with you all as Epworth family and work with you. Because right now, friends, our cities need us. Our cities need us to model the conversations that I was able to have and that I, or that I was gifted with this week. So let's show a possible way that is forward, that will create a new heavens and a new earth, and that will bring forth something incredible and something beautiful for each and every one of us. Amen. <laughs>